Okay. So, so we're going to talk about we're talking about, we're talking about Shemot, the um, first portion of the Book of Exodus. I sent out the um, the verses that we're going to talk about. So we're talking, Moses is born in this week's Torah portion. Moses is born in this week's Torah portion. We're going to look in verse number, in chapter two, verse number two of the book of Exodus. So this is talking about when Yochebed, This is talking about when Yocheved, the wife of um, the wife of Amram, who is the, she's actually the daughter of um, she's actually the, actually the daughter of um, of of Levi, who was who was the who was one of the tribes. So Yocheved, so so um, Yocheved gives she had two children. She had uh, uh, Miriam and Miriam and Aaron. And then she separated from her husband. This is what it talks about, and it tells us in the midrash. She separated from her husband because Pharaoh had made the decree that all of the all of the baby boys were going to be thrown into the river Nile. So Am- Amram said to Yocheved, "We don't, we can't, you know, we we can't be having children anymore. We shouldn't be, and we shouldn't be together for the, in, the, in in that case." And they separate. Their daughter Miriam. Came, she was a wise girl. She was, she was, uh, she was five or six years old at the time, or even younger, maybe four. Even she came to her, she came to her, um, she came to her, her parents, to her father, and she said, "How could you separate from? How could you bo- both separate by doing so? Not only are the boys not being born, but the girls are not being born either. So you're actually causing the Jewish people to be completely, completely finished." So Am so so Amram listens to his uh, Amram listens to his um, his daughter took her advice so he kissed her on the head and he re he came back together with his wife with with Yocheved and she it was actually right then that she became pregnant she conceived and bore a son and when she saw him that and she saw him that he was good this is what the verse says she saw. She saw that he was good and she hid him for three months. What does it mean that she saw that he was good? So, David, I'm going to ask you to put away the Kahas Chomish because it's going, to, it's going to answer all the questions. And it's also, but uh, what, what, what's the meaning that she saw that Moses was good? He wasn't actually called Moses yet, he was just a baby that was born. And the name Moses comes around later. What's, what does this mean? So there's two opinions in the Zohar. And actually, there's also two opinions in the Talmud, which are a bit different, but the two opinions that are brought in the Zohar, one of them is from Rabbi Yossi, who says that the light of the Shekhinah filled the house. When he was born, the light, he, he shined, and the light of the Shekhinah filled the house. Rabbi Chia, who is the other rabbi, says that he was born circumcised. There was no foreskin. So physically, physically he was he was born serpent. He was born without the, the, the force. There's another opinion, another opinion in the Talmud that says that she saw that he was good, that he gave gave him the name Toy Tuvia. Tuvia is the name means good God. So she gave him the name Tuvia, because Tuvia comes from the word good. So actually, he was actually called by his parents Tuvia, even though later he was called Moses by somebody else. We look a few verses later. After she hides him in the water. And what happens is, Pharaoh's, in verse number five, Pharaoh's daughter went down to bathe to the Nile and her, her maidens were walking, uh, walking along the Nile. She saw the basket in the midst of the marsh and she sent her maidservant. She took it. Actually, interesting. It says in the translation that she that she sent her maidservant because the word says that she put out her ama, 
Amok, it, so it's so the, the meaning of the, the, the way that's explained according to one of the opinions that is brought down is that her arm actually stretched out she, longer than it was supposed to. She put out her arm to take, she put out her arm to take Moses. And her arm stretched out and became longer. It grew longer than it actually was to, in order to be able to take the basket from the water. She opened it. She saw the child. And behold, it was a weeping, a weeping lad. And she had compassion on him. And she said, it's one of the Hebrews. And then her sis, the sister of Moses, who was Mir Miriam, who was watching all this happening, real, sees that she is unable, that Basia, the daughter of Pharaoh, her name was Basia, she was unable to find anybody that the baby would nurse from. Moses was not drinking any, would not drink any Egyptian milk. That's what it says. He's going to speak to the, someone that's going to speak to the to, to Hashem and give over the Torah was not going to drink the milk of Egypt. He was going to only drink the milk of his mother. So she said to Basia, let me go and call one of the Israel, one of the, let me go, let me go call someone that he will nurse from. And she brought, and, and she, so the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter pays her for this service in verse number nine. And the Yocheva takes the baby and she nurses him. And as, then the child, it says in verse number 10, the child grew up and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became like a son to, Pharaoh, to Pharaoh's daughter. And, um, and she called him Moses because Mo Moshe, the word Moshe comes from the word Moshisiu, which means to be drawn out. And since he was drawn out, she drew him out from the water. She gave him the name Moses. Everybody hears me okay? I, feel, I see my screen getting, my screen is stuck. So I don't know if that means anything on your end. Yeah, you're frozen, but I'm we frozen. can. Yeah, okay. Nobody else is. So, that, that's why you're oh you're still here in voice, right, Rabbi? I'm still here in voice. Yeah, yeah. I'm back. Okay. So she gives him the name Moses because Moses comes with the word Mashiach, which means to be drawn from the water. So confusing. So what happens over here is that Yocheved make basically Basia needs Moses to be nursed, be breastfed. So she gives the Moses to his mother, to Yocheved. And Yocheved agree the agreement is as soon as he's finished nursing, she's gonna bring him back to Basia, to Pharaoh's daughter, because she's the one that rescued him and it, there was no, it wasn't, you know, she had officially given over, put the child in the water. She had, she had, so to speak, abandoned him, Moses. So she was just doing a service for the daughter of Pharaoh. Then, if this is, so after the child grew up, it says, when the child grew up, she brought him to Basia. Basia gave him his name. Then we look in, number, in verse number 11. Now it came to pass in those days that Moses grew up. Again, it says he grew up. And he went out to his brothers and looked at their burdens. He saw the Egyptian man striking a Hebrew man of his brothers. What is the second time that he's growing up? What's, it, what's changing over here? Any thoughts? So he grew up and he grew up again. What's going on over there? Well, the second time he grew up is when he started to identify with the uh, Hebrews. Um, where he made some sort of action that indicated his identification. 
Very good. So this is actually what one of one of the the Tanchuma, the Midrash Tanchuma says that he went out to his bre- brethren, his brothers. This is one of this is one of the one of the explanations that's given. There's act, there's more than one explanation. Another explanation is that he grew up in wisdom. He became very wise. This is from the Ramban Manachmanides. Rashi says that he grew up. He became important. The word, it says in the verse, in those days. So it was in those days, it was in the same day. This is, we're got, they're going to do something a little technical for a second. So stay for something technical for a, few, for a couple of minutes, and we'll move on to the, to the, more, uh, the more exciting part. The technicalities are like this. It says in those days, he grew up. So the same days as previously, meaning it's, it, it's, t- it's around, the same, around the same time as the earlier growing up that happened. So it's obviously not, in age, because it's not something, it's not time that passed. It's the same, it's in those days, in those previous days. So it means something different. It doesn't mean age. It doesn't mean they grew up in age. It means that he became important. What is the importance? And this is from the Talmud, Rabbi Yehuda, the son of Rabbi Eli, says that what was his importance? Not that he became some kind of king or deputy like Joseph, but that he that Pharaoh put him in charge of the house. He became the manager over Pharaoh's house, Pharaoh's household, or what, or the or the, the, the not his household, but the things that happened in the house. So he became the manager of the palace. He wasn't the king. He wasn't you know, but he became the manager of the palace. But one second, how old is he already? He just finished nursing, right? He just finished breastfeeding from his mother. And he grew up a little bit more. And he brought, she brought him to, um, to Basil as she had made her, as the deal had been made. So he's already becoming the head of the, of the house. He's a, what, a three-year-old child, maybe. How could that be? So Rashi says, no, no, the first, well, this, this is what Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Eli, the, in the Talmud says, Rashi brings it down. He says, the first time when he grew up, it means that he became tall. He wasn't just growing up a little bit past his breastfeeding. He actually became a big, a big kid. So the first one is that he became a big kid. He turned, let's say he was 9, 10, 11, 12, let's say. Maximum 12, 12 years old. He was a big kid. The second one, now in those days when he was 11 or 12 years old, Pharaoh put him as the manager of the house. He was still young, still smaller than someone of that, you know, quite much younger than anybody that would usually, usually be put as the manager of the house. But he wasn't a baby. He was a big kid. So the first, the Yigda, when it says he grew up the first time, it means that he became tall, became a big kid. And the second, the Yigda, means that he became important. Now, the problem with this is, how could it be that he became tall within Yocheved's home, in the home of his mother? The deal was that he's going to be there for breastfeeding. And as soon as he's finished feeding him, as soon as he finishes nursing, he is going to, as soon as he weans him, he is going to go back to Pharaoh's daughter, who's the one that, the one that brought him in. So how could she have kept him in her possession, in her home, until he became tall, until he became big? So the Rebbe explains that Yocheved, obviously, she wanted her son to stay with her as long as she could. So she found good explanations for Pharaoh's daughter, for Basia. So listen, this baby, that, you know, a child that, that, that nurses from the mother for, for, for two years, let's say, that was typical in those times, two years, becomes used to the mother, becomes accustomed to the mother, needs the mother, and it's going to be a traumatizing experience for him to be taken away from me. So let him grow up a little bit. Let him get to become a bit of a bigger kid until he's able to do his own thing, until his, there's different opinions in Jewish law when somebody becomes no longer needing their mother. Five or six, and then there's actually an opinion needing, in other words, they can survive. They can get, them, they can get around. They can figure it out. If, if, God forbid, their mother wouldn't be there, they could figure it out. Five or six. And there's actually an opinion that says 11 or 12. So she kept him as long as she could. Obviously, what we wasn't a, a debate in Jewish law, but it was it was a way it was as long as she was able to keep him in her home. 
once he became tall, it wasn't possible anymore. He's a big kid. What do you mean? He's going to be traumatized if I take, you take, him, I take him away from you? He's, he's, he gets around. He's, he figured it out already. So now she had to give him over to Pharaoh's home, to Basia. How did he become important? He became important. He's only 10, 11 years old. He's a young kid. So the verse says, the second time when it says he grew up, it says he, Moses grew up. The Yigdal Moshe. Moses grew up. Who's Moshe? Why was he given the name Moshe? Because Basiath had favored him. She loved him. She had special favor in, his, in her eyes. He had special favor in her eyes. She was the one that she took out of the water. I saved, I drew out this child from the water. That's why I gave him this name. And according to the Midrash, her arm grew to take him out. A miracle happened for her to take him out. This was, a spe- she had a special fund, a special love and a special fondness to Moses. So Basia, who is Pharaoh's princess, his daughter, she convinced Pharaoh. She said, look, this is my, my boy that I love. He's a special boy. Let's give him a good position. Let's, let's make him feel good in the palace. Put him, he can't become, you know, you can't make him a, a dictator in the, in the, in the, in the, in the kingdom because then the, the big important people are going to say, how are you putting a child in, in charge of us? But they can make him, put him in charge of the home, make him the manager in the home. Just like Joseph, right? Joseph was found favor in the eyes of Potiphar, the, 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 the guy, who, the, the, the guy who, he, who bought him as a slave. And eventually he became the manager of Potiphar's home until the story with Potiphar's wife, when his wife claimed that she was. But until then, he was the manager of the home. So he found special favor in Potiphar's eyes. He put him in charge of the home. Who's with me? Got it so far? Deborah, you're with us? Yeah. Great. We don't see you. That's why I was. Yeah, I turned the. No worries at all. I was better. For you. <laughs> Just uh. Just listening. It's good to know who's there. Okay. Let's take a look at Moses' personality. Moses himself. Who was Moses? So, so it says you know based on various verses and based on different things we know about Moses. The Rambam, and one of these says in his in his explanation to the missionary, he says. And Moses was the chosen, the best from all humanity. From the old humanity, he was the highest, the, most, the chosen, the best. Why? He was one thing with God. He was completely connected and attached and united with Hashem. That you couldn't, uh, you couldn't, uh, you know, he was one thing with Hashem. This is one aspect of Moses. But what's the, what's the more typical, what's the aspect of Moses that we know more? Well, I think the most popular aspect of Moses is his humility. Humility, okay, humil- humil- humility is it's true, but humility is really something which is, humility could also be part of that, part of the same idea. So he's so one with Hashem, that he feels his nullification to God, he feels his oneness with Hashem. But there's another whole, another side of Moses, which is Moses' leadership. Moses' leadership. Moses is the leader of the Jewish people. He takes the Jewish people out of Egypt. He gives, them the, he gives us a Torah. He leads them in the, in the desert. He provides them with a manna. Or, or brings down the blessing for the manna. So Moses is, the, is, on one hand, he's one thing with Hashem. He's attached to God. On the other hand, he's, he's not just, you know, in his own world attached to God. He's a leader of the Jewish people. He's a shepherd of the Jewish people. Why did Hashem choose him? It says in last week's portion, why does it tell us that he was a shepherd for, Je- for, for, Je- for Jephro's uh, um, flock in order to bring out that he cared about every single animal. He cared about every single one. And that's why Hashem said, you care about a single sheep. I'm going to make you the leader of my people, that you care about every individual. Remember the first, the first discussion that we brought right at the beginning of the, of the class. We said about when Moses was born, the house became light. Sorry, it says when Moses, Moses was born, she saw that he was good. And we said there's two explanations. One explanation, which is the explanation of Rabbi Chia, that he was born without, he was born um, 
and, and with the circumcised. And the other opinion of Rabbi Yossi that says that, he, that his light shined and brought light to the whole home, whole house. That makes me think of Rebecca. Yes, very similar. But here there was actually possibly to say a physical light in the room. So Rebecca brought the cloud of, of glory after the Shekhinah that came down. But here you, there was a light, it lit up the room. It was, it was a ray from Moses himself. It says in, in there's the four different uh, sections of the Torah. There's the shot, the simple explanation, and then we have the more midrashic and uh, uh, analytical exp explanations, which are, let's say, the this idea of Moses bringing light to the house is more midrashic, or Albasia's arm sticking out. Then we have we have the highest level. I'm missing out the fourth one, the third one, but the highest level of of, of the four elements of the Torah is so Kabbalah, the hidden aspects of the Torah. So the Rebbe's father. The rabbi's father, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak. He was the, the, the rabbi of, um, the, of the city of Dnepr Petrovsk, which is the, you know, it's on the, uh, big on the news right now, Dnepr. So um, he was actually the, the, the Dnepr was the, was the biggest, one of the biggest um, Jewish communities in, in Ukraine or in, in the Soviet Union. Um, in uh, we're talking about before before the Second World War, and he was the rabbi of that city. He was a a, a great, a, a, an incredible leader in 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 the Soviet Union, the Jewish people. The rabbi learned some lead, picked obviously some of the leadership that he got was from his father, and he was also a major Kabbalist. He wrote the Kabbalah, and especially when he was he was he was sentenced to five years in Siberia by the Soviets, where he didn't have any access to um, to pen the pens or paper or anything, and his wife Rebbe Simchana came to join him there, even though she wasn't officially sentenced, but she came to join him and she went around and collected um, grass and made she she worked played with the grass she turned it into ink, she soaked it and she turned it into ink and she helped him find she and she brought a couple of his books with him, the Zohar and the Tanya and a couple of other books. And on the sides, on the margins of the books, he wrote notes. He wrote his ideas of Kabbalah and, and, and Torah and in every single margin of the books in his handwriting, all around. Whatever paper he could get his hands on, he wrote with his, the grass that his wife brought him. And we have a number of his books. A number of his, they were, they were published much later in New York by the Rebbe. But it, in, completely Kabbalah, all from the, the Zohar and the Kabbalistic ideas. He says, he brings out through many different elements, different ideas in the Torah, that Rabbi Chia, there's, there's different, we must first mention, you know, obviously we know, we know about the 10 levels, right? The 10 levels of the person or of Hashem. So you've got the three levels of intellect and the seven emotions. And often Yusoyed, which is the sixth emotion, which is, means connection. Or it, one of the meanings of it is connection is used out as a typical, um, as the example for most of for the other emotions. So emotions are about connecting with someone else. So you said, which is the sixth one, which is, which is really essentially connection, is, is, uh, is, is really a, um, leads the rest of the middles, the rest of the emotions. And from, from one perspective, he says, Rabbi Chia, this Rabbi Chia who said that Moses was born with circumcised, Rabbi Chia was is the level of Yisod, based on different things that he said in Torah and in his teachings. He fits with the level of Yisod. Rabbi Yossi, the word Yossi has the numerical value, gematria of the word Elokim, God. Elokim is not God the way God is higher than the world. Elokim is the way God comes down in the world. The different, different, different names of God which are brought, which are which exemplify different, which bring out different parts of Hashem. So Elokim brings out the way Hashem comes down in the limitation of the world. So Rabbi Yossi is the numerical value of the word Elokim, which is the idea of Malchus, the seventh emotion, the lowest one. Malchus is expression. Expression, which is coming down, going out of the person, going out, let's say, in, in, when we talk about the godly, godly, godly light, going out of the higher worlds and coming down into this world, We're coming down from one higher world to an, a lower world. So it's expression is going, is, is stepping down below 
the person into a different different place. So Rabbi Chia, who says Moses was born circumcised, he's the idea of Yisod. And Rabbi Yossi, who says that Moses' light filled the home, he is the idea of Malchus, bringing down. This fits very well with their explanations that they give. Really, when we have two opinions in the Torah that aren't actually, that could both work together, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily arguing with each other. They're actually both saying, obviously there are times when Beis Shammai says kosher, Beis Shammai Hillel says pasal, it's a, not, a, not non-kosher, that's, those are opposites, that's an argument. But what Rabbi Chia says, Moses was born circumcised, and Rabbi, and Rabbi Yossi says his life filled the home, maybe it was both. And according to the way we learn Torah, it was both. It's what their discussion is, what was the main thing for Moses, when Moses' mother saw him, she saw that he was good, what did she see? What was, what was the main thing for her that what stuck out the most? Was it the fact that his life filled the home? Or was it the fact that he was born with this miraculous uh, change in his body that, that he didn't have, that he had a bris, that he was circumcised? The idea of Moses' life filling the home is very clearly coming out into the world, right? That's the whole idea of giving to the world, shining to the world, shining to the whole house and shining outwards. Just like the menorah filled the light, filled the temple and the windows opened out to the whole Israel, to the whole world. So, so too, the light of Moses' home filled, lit up the whole world. Moses became the leader of the Jewish people. The fact that he was born without it, without the foreskin says the foreskin is is it's um, in the Gemara in the Talmud it's called the it's compared to the Yet Sahara the evil inclination. It still covers up what what blocks off from the openness to Hashem spiritually. Moses was born with a deep transmission a deep connection from Hashem in a way that made him different from other people made him, showed him to be a part of uh, connecting with Hashem and not something that fits into the world. Or that or that's not the point, but the, focusing more on his connection with Hashem, that he's born without an evil inclination. Every person in the world comes down with, with choice, with negative, negative character traits and good character, or the, up, the opportunity for negative character traits and the opportunity for good character traits. An animal saw and a godly saw. Moses was born without an evil inclination. There was no evil inside of him. There was no force trying to get him to do bad. Because he was one thing with Hashem. This is the opinion of Rabbi Chia, who is the idea of Yisod, which is still connected with the person, with the emotions, with the, with the intellect. It's not yet come down in expression. Whereas Rabbi Yossi, who is the whole idea of Rabbi Yossi, is the numerical value, numerical value of Elohim, which is limitation, the way God comes down into the world. He says, no, Moses' life filled the home. That was the main focus for Yochem. Because the main point about Moses was his leadership, his leadership of the people, not just the fact that he was connected with Hashem. We don't need the Torah to tell us about that. That's something which is between him and God. The Torah tells us about Moses. It tells us about his leadership. The fact that he came down into the world, that his life filled the home. Now let's go back to the Rashi that we said about earlier, the technical one. Moses was tall. And Moses was appointed the first thing he became tall and the second thing was he became important he was appointed over Pharaoh's home and those words are important appointed over the home who's the one that said this teaching from the Talmud well, you said that Rashi said it well, Rashi said it in the name of, of, of the rabbi in the Talmud I mentioned rabbi right. Yehud, the son of rabbi Eli oh. If we look in the Talmud, this is what the Rebbe, the Rebbe loves to, to, to take, take stories of the Talmud or teachings from people and see how that brings out. The Talmud is telling us about a certain person in the story to bring us something about that. Rabbi Huda, there's a story in the Talmud how he was extremely poor. So he had no money at all. And one of the other rabbis made a, made a public fast where everyone came together to pray. And he didn't come because he had no clothing. He didn't have clothing to, re- to wear to go out of the house. He was so poor. He, maybe he had rags that weren't modest. So he couldn't go out of the house. But it says in another place in the Talmud that this Rabbi Yehuda, the son of Rabbi Eli, was appointed by the Kaiser of Rome, I guess, to be the head of the, to be the, the main speaker in the house of the Nasi. 
the Nazi the was Nazi. a prince, to be the main, to be to be like the main one of the main players over there, to be the head over the house. So even though he looked externally, sorry, even though externally, Rabbi Yehuda, the son of Rabbi Eli, was very low. He looked, he looked low. He looked, he looked poor. He looked, he obviously was hungry and he didn't, and he, he looked poor and, and rigged and he didn't have clothing, etc. <laughs> he found favor in the eyes of the Kaiser. That's why he put him in charge of the house, of, of the Nazi, of the head of the prince, because the Kaiser liked him. He liked his personality. He liked who he was. He liked his, his person, he liked his persona. So his external look didn't matter. His persona is what counted. And because of that, he appointed him and made and promoted him to one of the heads of the of the people. Similar to Joseph, right? Joseph was a poor, like the like the the head of the of the of the of the, of the um, drinks at the Pharaoh, the, the other guy, the head of the the head of the of the baking. He said, the head of the drinks. He says he says he's a Jewish a Jewish slave that's in in the prison. And Pharaoh said, bring him out and get him, put on, put on nice clothing on him. And then he appoints him as a second, as a deputy, second in command in Egypt, because he found favor in Pharaoh's eyes. Same idea. What does Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi, the son of Rabbi Eli, represent in Kabbalah? In Kabbalah. Sorry. He represents, once again, Malchus, the lower level. And I'll tell you why. Yehuda, Yehuda is the name, the name Yehuda, which was the, given to the fourth one of the tribes, was because of Leah's um, thankfulness, gratitude, and appreciation to Hashem, which also comes together. Gratitude comes together with bitter, with humility. When we feel humble, we feel that we don't deserve, but Hashem gives us anyways. So we have great humility and we have great gratitude at the same time for every, anything that we have. And Malchus is the idea of, of humility, of bitter. So Malchus is, although Malchus is expression which goes out of the elements to the world, to the other, but it receives from everything else. Malchus is nothing but expression. You can't express if you don't have intellect and you don't have feelings. The feelings and the intellect is what's expressed. So the expression is just a tool to express something else. It really has no substance in itself. It's just a receiver, just a, just a receptor. A receiver which gives out, but it gives out what it got from somewhere else. This is the idea of Yehuda. So Yehuda is Malchus. Yehuda is Malchus, gratitude, which comes together with bitto, humility, humility, because of receiving everything from higher, receiving the, 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 yisod, the yisod and all the other emotions and all the intellect. In Hasidus, there's two different ways of looking at Malchus. This idea of Malchus, Malchus that Malchus is the expression. There's Malchus the way it is in the higher worlds and at Silas, the way it is still before it comes out, and there's Malchus the way it comes down. Meaning, before we express, let's say, let's bring down on a very this on a very simple level for us to understand. Before we express something, we have to have the thought to of what, how we're going to express it. I'm going to tell. I'm going to say something, or not, at the, or at the same time, whatever it is. This thought running all the time, which is which is preparing those words inside of us to then go out of us. So although the, you don't need thought, those thoughts of which prepare the expression, unless you're going to be talking to someone. I mean, you can, you have thoughts anyways, but the, the idea of preparing to express, this is only to, in order to talk outwards, to go out of the person. So I, everything, I have, my, I have my mind, I have my feelings. That's all inside of me. That's all who I am. Then I have my expression, which is to tell you something. And it comes out of my mouth, and now you hear it. But before it comes out of my mouth, there's a part of me which is getting ready to give to you. If I lived by, by myself on a desert island, I would never have to deal with expression. It wouldn't be part of me. So there's expression the way it is inside of the person, and expression the way it is outside of the person. Malchus the way it comes down in the, in the other worlds, and Malchus the way it still is in that suits. 
Rabbi, what's the difference between the Malchus of Rabbi Yehuda, who's gratitude and humility, to the Malchus of Rabbi Yossi, who's the numerical value of Elohim? Yehuda, what's the word, what are the letters of Yehuda? Should have written, written it down to share the screen, but what are the letters of Yehuda? Yud, hey, vav, dalad, hey. Two hey's, a yud, a dalad, and a vav. Take out the dalad for a second, and you're left with yud, k, vav, k. What's yud, k, vav, k? Hashem's name. Not Hashem's name, Elohim. The other name of Hashem, the higher name of Hashem, the way Hashem's name is, the way we're not supposed to actually pronounce it in today's times. Like God said to Moses, I'm going to show you your Yud Vavke. I'm going to give you this revelation of me, of my essence, the way I am higher than the world. You, you, uh, it comes to the word, word, Haya Haya year. He was, he will be, and he is. Past, present, future, all at the same time. God is higher than the world. Then God comes down in Elohim, which is limitation of the light. Yehuda is not a numerical value which you have to add up and start doing math to get, to get there. It's not hidden. It's openly Yud Kevav. You take out the dollar and you got it. Yossi, you have to do a, uh, you have to do a, a go and do do a math and 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 find out the numerical value of Yossi and numerical value of Elohim. And then we realize, oh, Yossi has a connection with God, but God, the way God is hidden, the way God comes down in a limited line in the world. It's not Malchus the way it is in God, the essence of God, the way it's still connected with with Hashem. So this Rabbi Yehuda, the son of Rabbi Eli, sees both elements of Moses. Moses, the way Moses is one with Hashem. Moses, the way he is one, connected with God, which is Moses being tall, his, his, his uniqueness in his size, says that Adam was tall and he reached the sky. He was one, he reached God, so to speak. This is Midrashic, like this idea. But Moses was tall. It was about himself. He was a tall person, his connection being, being a high person, which express, he expresses his connection with Hashem. And then there's Moses, the way he is appointed to, uh, to be in charge, to be the manager of a Pharaoh's home. Which Rabbi Yehuda, the son of Rabbi Eli, had a special understanding for, because he saw somebody himself being fi finding favor in the eyes of the case and being promoted to be the, to put in charge of others, to be, to be in charge of the home. And he says, and this is also Moses. Moses is not just God's light, the way it is in the way it is in the emotions. Moses is God's light, the way it comes down, to ready to express. It's still one thing with Hashem. It's clearly connected with Hashem. There's no, there's no, there's, there's no circum, there's, it, there's no need for a circum, it's circumcised. There's no foreskin. There's no evil inclination. One thing with God, but He's appointed in the in the home, and He shines to the home. So this is this is the um, this is the, the two aspects of Moses which come out already at a very young age, when as soon as he's born, and later when he's tall and unique and special, and he wouldn't drink the Egyptian milk, and then the, and the way he is appointed to be in charge of Pharaoh's home and to be a light to the world around him. Thank you for joining. Thank you. It's a really good portrait of Moses. Yeah, it was, was great. Right? Say that again, Deborah. It was a. It was. This was a very illuminating portrait of Moses. Oh, I was going to use the word illuminating too. <laughs> <laughs> the illuminating. That just came to me. We must have hive mind here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. There's always to think about. Yeah. Yes, of course. Now we can find it in every part of Moses. Every time we see Moses, you can look for the two aspects. Yeah. Very good. Thank Have you, a good everybody. Day, everyone. Take care. Nice to see you all. And um, okay. be in touch.